damn green tea bushes. Don't need more green tea. Here's a, oh, here's a, I'm gonna give you the business. Ah, there he goes. Ah, well, since we last spoke, quite a few things have changed around here, haven't they? And as April segued into May, and May eventually became June, we got to where we are now, where it's raining almost every damn day. So before we get well, totally soaked out here, let me go kick off these snake gaiters I've got on and give you all the skinny on some of the modifications I've had to make to my little Daihatsu deck fan since I picked it up. Because, well, the vehicle really does need some help. <sighs> Throwing a set of chains on the tailgate. It's probably a good place to start when it comes to mods. So that, well, he can extend the tailgate, obviously, and sit on it. Because the way it was slanted, it wasn't, again, completely vertical. It just kind of stuck out at a weird angle. It made no sense why I had to did that. It really was just in the way. Stupid. Either go all the way or not at all. Right, guys? Hey, what do you know? Looks like the rain's finally cutting out a bit. Let's get back to our previous discussion, shall we? <laughs> so, I guess we might as well start with the front of the vehicle. Because that's where I've outfitted some fog lights. Um, when I installed these lights, it was, again, like most of the other mods on the vehicle, out of pure necessity. Main reason I put fog lights on the front of the vehicle wasn't just for the twisty mountain roads and you can see mountain mist and everything else that goes into living up here in the rural southern mountains of Japan. It was the fact that putting bulbs in these lenses requires disassembling the front bumper, a Houdini act, and a series of fresh plastic clips to follow. Yeah, it's one of those vehicles. Don't you love it? As you can clearly see, what I have affixed to the front of the vehicle are two sets of fog lamps, dual beam. Uh, these are 6,000 Ks of memory service, so they do have some glare. But uh, yeah, they, uh, they're they pure whites, and they you know, I got a little you know $20 aluminum license plate holder and fog light mount for the front of it. And while these fog lights do a pretty decent job of illuminating the road, they do create a hell of a lot of glare. And I don't think they are shocking legal. So they will need to be swapped out for something that is street legal before I have inspection around uh, April of next year. Another issue with these fog lights that I have found is how they are affixed. So check this out. Yeah, cheapy, flimsy ass plastic bumper. Every time I hit a bump, these things bounce and shake around. So definitely something we will be upgrading in due time. Now, regarding the roof carrier on the vehicle, this is just your standard crossbar Eno carrier rack system that actually was technically not supposed to fit the vehicle, but I did a little research and there were a couple of guys that actually did fit this lower bar version onto the deck van. Uh, it was actually the cargo van version, which has the same high roof dimensions, so it really didn't bother me at all all um and yeah sure enough it clears with plenty of extra give in case of something you know heavy really being on the roof and it you know god forbid starts to buckle under weight um it also has locks on it of course and the other thing about this roof bar in bar system i especially like is that because i got the lower version it's not too tall because i know i'm going to lift the vehicle it's already a high roof you know clearance is going to be an issue even though the vehicle is pretty small so that was something i had to take into consideration when i got this you know rack system now as for the actual basket itself that sits on top of my dick van uh this is actually something that also was not supposed to fit the vehicle it's technically too long but as you shall soon see there was a reason i opted for the slightly elongated version and did not go with the rinkiest dinkiest thing that they offered um and there's also a reason why i have a water tank up here do not worry ladies and gentlemen this is not gasoline <laughs> yeah i gotta have some extra water for rinsing out the bed of the truck when you're 
moving compost, a little spillage happens, or there might be a little bit of uh, deer blood in the back. You just will rinse a roo, never hurt anybody. Get past the water tank on the driver's side. You will notice there is a shovel mounted to the roof of the carrier. So uh, I have this uh, affixed with these guys. These little silicone strapped buckles are actually designed for bicycles for holding flashlights onto fronts of them uh, and gear and what have you. So yeah, these are bike mounts, but I got some measurements and figured out it fits perfectly with my little steel shovel. So when it comes to having a shovel on the roof, it's there permanently. It also flips around easily so I can move it pretty much in any direction as required and just reach up and grab it. It stays, of course, on top of the net, which uh, is pretty much up there all the time. And then uh, underneath the net, this guy, you can see I covered it a bit up under here with an aluminum sheet. This helps shield this rear window from torrential downpours, sun hitting at a specific angle from up top and glare. Uh, it just kind of keeps me from having it. Extended out by a good seven to eight inches, I now have a bar system that I can triangulate farm tools and you know elongated gear you know you know bamboo whatever i need to move that won't fit flat in the bed of the truck or extend out too far can potentially get angled and adjusted and strapped down to this Daihatsu had an OE bar option that was down here. That's what these three hex nuts are for or excuse me hex bolts but it's just a bar. It's just a little dinky bar, and it that, that's all it does. This offers me way more flexibility, uh, especially when it comes to, well, hauling camping gear and lighter stuff on the rooftop. While we are back here, it probably should be mentioned that this flimsy looking but super strong bed cover was something that I had to pretty much custom engineer from the ground up to fit on the back of the vehicle. And here's how I did it. Traditional Japanese K trucks have hooks down underneath near the wheel wells. But being that this has a van sliding rear door, I can't run straps down the side and hook into any hooks. So ergo, the deck van doesn't have any to begin with. What it does have though, is the opportunity for clasping ring rail locks. This explains what these little guys are. These are basically just your standard gear grip threaded bolt locks. After taking some measurements with a caliper, I discovered that a Japanese manufacturer by the name of Minora made these super sturdy stainless steel clamps that came with little silicone inserts to snug them down. Not only did this little custom locking system that I developed work great for, well, affixing the tarp onto the back of the truck, but it also allowed me to put extras on the back with things like eye hooks so that I can clip on gear during a camping trip and just pull up right next to it with my camel back hanging off the truck if I need water. Um, whatever else is needed, you know, spread, you know, gives you a really good anchor as well if you need to run a, a tent tarp to it or any type of string. But in order to get this truck bed cover to fit onto the back of the vehicle, I had to get a little creative because again, despite it, well, being the width of a K truck, the length of it is quite short in stature. So whereas this first latch lined up perfectly with the stock eye hole that was stamped into it or the grommet hole, as we like to call it, this back one, required stamping a fresh eye hole into the cover and affixing it because, well, let's face it, this guy would just end up here in the plastic. So where it does take me a little bit more time to, you know, tie on thread and thread it back in than if it had a little bit of a toe strap and, you know, bungee cord attached to it, it still works fine. Uh, and actually more than fine, it's even more secure. But there was an issue with the mounting point of it across the back too. Because while this tarp typically would be attached to a rear window guard, which almost all standard Japanese K trucks have for protective and mounting purposes. So I devised a plan. I incorporated a pressure bar and span it from one side to another, use more of the exact same design that I have on each bar on the side with the closed Minora clamps, as well as the threaded 
hex gear tie downs. So when it comes time to close this sucker up though and strap it down, all you gotta do is close it, take your bungee cords if you know it's gonna rain and clamp them on. This will keep the tarp from gathering too much water when it pours rain and pull it back over. Now, as for mounting on the rear portion of the vehicle, I had to devise a, something else a little on the custom end to make it work. Originally, where this bungee cord would wrap around was a like a silicone stopper. Remember, there weren't chains on the tailgate or any form of uh, latch hold of any kind. So it would flop down. But when it flopped down, it would hit the actual rear bumper and the hinges of the tailgate. So being a bunch of cheap asses, Daihatsu just put some silicone stoppers with just a threaded bolt in it into the tailgate. So when it went down, the silicone stoppers hit this and it didn't smash into the bumper. That is why, well, the tailgate wouldn't be completely vertical when it was down in stock form. But that wasn't the only portion of the puzzle that really truly bothered me. What got me more actually was the fact that, well, these bungee cords would just pop off. Remember, it's just a silicone stopper on the end. So there was no way for it to stay permanently affixed, especially if you've got a bunch of gear underneath your carrier that you're trying to hold down. So I backed them out, removed them, got at my thread pitch, and did pretty much the same thing I did with the railing clamps with these gear-like threaded bolts. But I still needed something to attach my bungee cords to, which I have conveniently clamped closed on each eyelet in so they don't come out. What I came up with was just a standard stainless bar that was the, just the right width betwixt the two holes on each end. And what I utilized up here is... Yet again, more bicycle ingenuity was another clamp. This is also what some people like to use for additional gear on a bicycle or a motorcycle, um, additional lighting, things like that. Um, umbrella holder, you know, people you find uses for these things all over the place when it comes to motorcycles and bicycles. So when I found that the hole was just the right size, I popped it in, slapped these suckers on, put some more cycling gear on the end. These are cat eye uh, LED uh, bar end lights on each end so you don't have to worry about spiders or any creepy crawlies setting up inside or rusting out from within. Sealed them up and clamped them in and now when it's time to tie it down I just run it from the top on each end. Take the center ones which are also clamped closed on the eye hole and run them the opposite way. So we have pressure coming from both sides across the bar and it snugs it up tight. This way it you know, it'll flap around, but it ain't going anywhere. Now, internally, modifications were pretty much just an LED dome light, a uh, wireless charging cell phone clip, a you know, Bluetooth speaker, um, so I can play Spotify in the truck. Also have a handy dandy recorder because Japanese grandmas really don't know how to drive well, and I need footage of that shit in case something goes down. Uh, I also installed larger cup holder adapters because uh, apparently Japanese beverages do not accommodate the Yeti. USB charging for obvious reasons with multi ports for additional gear. And then there's the roof carrier in the back, which is uh, fairly useful. It tags a bit, so I'll probably upgrade that to something a little bit sturdier. And then there's this guy, which uh, is my rear flashlight for the bed of the truck. No, it is not on. That is just a reflection from the light outside the vehicle making it look like it is on. But this guy up here, he is super useful. Well, I, I did not want to have to drill into the back of the truck to run external lighting. So this magnetized bad boy is awesome. He uh, folds out, he's got extra bulbs, he's got all sorts of stuff. It's super, super bright. Battery life ain't great, but hey, I've got auxiliary for that on the truck. Being that I work up on the farm and come back absolutely filthy, uh, as the uh, <clears throat> floorboard of the vehicle clearly illustrates, I threw on some gray seat covers, which actually are surprisingly comfortable, and uh, they're a lot easier to clean than the actual cloth fabric on the truck itself. So that's pretty much it for, well, my modest modifications to my Dollhouse Dick Ben. But that doesn't mean that I'm stopping there because 
By golly gosh, I do not like the minuscule ride height of the vehicle, as I clearly stated in my previous video. That front fog light assembly is absolutely bare bones basic, and I would love to upgrade it actually with a full blown steel bull bar and winch setup, which here on the farm really do need and on top of that too i mean the traction on these tires are terrible it's uh, we'll get to that in a future video as well but whew, i have tolerated these tires in this stock configuration for the better part of a year and a half at this point and i gotta tell you guys it ain't that great but we'll get to all that noise in our next video because there's a lot to talk about when it comes to modifying this thing. So y'all stay tuned because we've got a whole plethora of partners that are helping support us via the aftermarket community and help get this vehicle to a point where it is far more practical and enjoyable to drive than ever before. It'll also help me out because, well, you can see I've got my hands full up here and I need all the help I can get. Speaking of which, better get back to digging before the rain starts again. We'll catch y'all in the next episode.